Hi everyone, um, thanks for coming here today. I'm Iris and today's ARC2 Handle workshop has three parts. So in the first 10 minutes, I'm going to show you some examples, talk about 2A generally and also later assignments. And then I'm going to walk you through a basic workflow from Rhino to Illustrator. And in the last part, I'll present three tricks to create a unique drawing. So let's start. Mm, I saw a syllabus this year. It's different from when I was taking the course, but it's like basically same as last semester. So I'm just gonna show you some like nice example from last semester. Actually, this is my friend's example. He did it and I think oh, this is his 1A. His one B, his one C. A good thing of his one C is he has a key map here and also has a small legend uh, like down there to show uh, what does the color stand for. And this is his 2A. Uh, we'll go back and talk about this later. And this is his 2B. 
So basically, for to be he, he did a side visit and he took some photos about the like elevation and the facade of each house, and he also uses tones which is uh like correspond to his to a drawing, and this is his to C. So for the housing typology, he uh, zoomed in to find a community with all the all five typology he categorized before, and they he, and then he did a render. And uh, this is his three A. So what what he did, I think, is uh, like some slightly development based on this community. So he did an exchange center here. Um, absolutely, we cannot do an exchange center du during the pandemic, but uh, this is what he did last semester. And he did some like uh, backyard development. He added a small children's park here. And for uh, like, this type of house, he adds some roof, roof gardens and he expanded this type of the house uh, like to host more people. And this is his 3B. I would say this one is a little bit too artistic, but uh, for the 3B, you almost do something like a perspective render to show like how the life um, looks like when you done your like development in your community. And this is his 3C. I actually really want to zoom in to show you guys the details. Okay, let's zoom in. So uh, for the 3C, you're gonna render your development in your community. So he, this is what he did. Actually, he did all his uh, like yards differently. And he has several different roof gardens like this. Oops. And also, he did a like a, a community help center here. So people here are handing out masks because uh, 3C um, at that time, the school was already locked down. So he did something to correspond to COVID-19. So let's go back to his 2A. Hmm. If you are still like struggling with ideas, uh, there's a website called Toronto Area Photographs. So basically uh, this website, it contains photographs from like 1950s until today. And also uh, UFD have a library called MDL Library it might also help. So for his 2A, what he did is, his theory is about like the housing typology and the shape of each box. So he went to the Google map and he highlighted uh, five different types of houses uh, by the shape of their roofs. And then he colored it to different like colors. Uh, this uh, also correspond to his later drawings. And also for his assignment two, he did a key map here. So this is his site at Bathurst Manor. So I think uh, these two extra drawing is a good thing um, just for you guys to like, X to show your research. So if you have time, you can do some extra drawings. 
And um, let's see. So these are the examples I had. I hope you guys now have a general idea of what you're gonna do, like produce in this course. And in next 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you the workflow from Rhino to Illustrator. Although I think 2A maybe is the easiest, like easiest assignment in ARC 200, it's really similar to 1A, right? So at this stage, I assume you guys all know how to create a drawing like this. So for the workflow, I'll just um, provide some suggestions about like efficiency. So I'm gonna use a later assignment as example. Wait one second here. So you guys will be able to like adapt this workflow in your future drawings. So firstly, let's start from Rhino. Ooh, my Rhino is really slow. Okay, just continue. So uh, for the Rhino, I have uh, some tips to highlight. Firstly, um, if you are gonna do a, like a shadow in Rhino, then export it to Photoshop. So you should, what you should do is, oops, make sure move your houses down. Like all, all of your houses should touch the mesh, the typology, uh, typography, sorry. And also you sh need to project all your line words onto the mesh. And especially for the water, you need to go back to the water layer and close it. And also, let me see. What else? Okay, so let's assume we just uh, down our detailing and make 2D. Don't save it. Mm, let's open next drawing here. Firstly, uh, what you're going to do is uh, select your drawings and move it near the point 000. zero, zero. Mm. And also, you're gonna tr trim all these lines that exceed the boundary. So here's uh, two ways to do it. Uh, first is you select all of them and you tap trim here, T-R-I-M. You press enter, then you just trim all the lines that you don't want. Make sure you do it really clean. Okay, so this is one method. And the second method is split it. So for the split, you just tap split first, S-P-L-I-T, split. And then you select all of them. You press control to deselect the like the square, which is your boundary, and you press enter, and then it will tell you to select cutting objects. So you select your boundary, you press enter again. Okay, so now all your all of your curves are like uh, split to two halves. You just select all of them and delete them. And by the way, uh, we are gonna make 2D, uh, remember to like make 2D your boundary so it would be easier to put your drawings in Illustrator. 
And the next step is you should make sure all your lines are cleaned and closed in Rhino. So don't postpone it to Illustrator because I found in Rhino, like do all your line work would be more like efficient. So what you're gonna do is Firstly, uh, make sure your line is closed. You can tap maybe select open curve, S-E-L, open curve. So, so this one. And then your all your open curve would be selected. I think this is a bad file though. But uh, this is what you, you're going to do. And also, if you're gonna detail in your houses, so make sure your details and your house outline are in two different layers. Um, it would be, be better if you model it in this way, but if you didn't just grab all the details and make a new layer, make a new layer here, maybe whatever details, details and right click, change object layer. Actually, this file already done this. So the purple one is the house details and the pink one is the outline. And what else, let me see. Okay, so here is another way to make sure your lines are closed in Rhino. So I'll just use this layer. If we draw a like, square, it's like really nearly, uh, nearly closed. Uh, you can see it from far away and you might not be able to discover it. What you can do is you, Select your boundary and you tap hatch. Nothing happened. Why? If you tap hatch and nothing happened, it means your lines are not closed. What you can do is you tap close curve. Boom. And now you'll see your curves are now closed and then you can tap hatch again hatch at this time it will tell you to click inside regions to keep so i would like to keep this region so i left click on it and i press enter boom you can choose some hatch styles in within rhino so for now, I'm just good with solid, okay. A good thing is when you export your line drawing, export to Illustrator, mm, the hash will still be kept. What do I mean is like hash. Remember to always choose preserve model scale and always to other layers. Okay. Should move this far to the side. So for now, I'm gonna. Where did I export it? Maybe in the table? No. A A L D H A I. Okay. Wait. There. Let's see, let's move them to the scene. So let's zoom in to see this part. 
So a good thing in Rhino Hatch is when you export it to Illustrator, the hatch will be exported as a hatch. So you can change the style here. Like I want to do it. Another thing is how to adjust language. Also, I'm still pretty sure you guys know something about language, but I just uh, gonna show you again. Can I? Okay. So you go to layers. Since we divided all the layers correctly within the Rhino, so it's pretty easy. I just, maybe I just want to make all the lines a darker color. Okay, so you go to layers, you just click the circle here, like for the house detail. For now, I think the 0 0.0003 is too strong. Since uh, you guys are, are going to do an online review, so no matter how thin your line is, it still, it's still going to show, right? So what I can do is if I want the extremely thin lines, I can do zero point and I just tap several zeros, maybe four or five and one. So it will shows like zero point, but the lines are actually different when you, when you zoom in. So the lines will still show. Um, this is the thinnest line that Illustrator can produce. And also, what else should I say? Yes. About the line tabs, for example, I don't like this line, but dash line. So what I can do is I click stroke here. I check the box here. It will dash the line. So I adjust the dash and gap. I think maybe 10 point and I like a smaller gap maybe four, uh, maybe five point. Okay. So this is a dash line. What if I want to do like dots? So here's a trick to do dotted line in Illustrator is using line caps. Uh, remember, never use round cap in your Illustrator file because sometimes the intersection might look weird. Uh, this is what my prof told me. Um, so, but the only, like only situation you're gonna use the round cap is when you, when you are gonna do dashed lines. So you choose round cap, you choose round corner, and you choose this dash like really small, like 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5. I think it's still too large, maybe 0 0.2. And you choose your gap, maybe also smaller one. You zoom in. Okay, it's almost that uh, like dotted, but like 0 0.1. Okay. So uh, this is the way you can do the dotted line in Illustrator. And also how to do arrows. I draw a line here. I don't want it to be dashed. Okay. So the good thing in Illustrator is you can do arrows easily. You just choose the arrow has here. Like you can choose many tabs. I'll just do something funky. <laughs> or you can do arrows at both ends, maybe this. Mm, and also, okay. let me do this. And now we're gonna use some other files to show you 
the difference between the uh, hash and the live append. Let's just open this workshop one materials. I heard some student told me they cannot do a live paint in uh, Illustrator. So I think the reason might be, for example, if I'm gonna to fill out all those houses, let's choose the color, C. Nothing happened, why? Because if we go back to the Rhino file of it, A to A, this one. I zoom into the houses. Okay, no, I just select. Maybe I should go this one. Yes. So, uh, I think this one is your original file. See, if you select one house, it will tell you ten curves added to selection. Why? Because all these curves are just be grouped to, to, together. They're not drawn. So I just tap drawn. Okay, now let's try select it again. Okay, one curve added to selection. So now after we drawn it, uh, the houses are uh, in one closed curve. And now you are able to either hatch it or live paint it in Illustrator. And I just go back to the make 2D stuff. Okay, this nothing on top. Okay, I'll, se I'll select all the objects and I'll draw it. It might be a little bit slow in drawing curves because there are a lot. Let's hope my render won't crash. Okay, cool. So now we can export this to Illustrator as well. It was selected to Illustrator. This is 2A or something. Just Go back to where is it? Okay, bad example. My scale is way off. Let me change my artboard actually. No, just maybe fifty by fifty. No, this is still too. Okay, I'm gonna export it again. One meters equal to what's the scale? Zero point zero two, right? Let's see if this time it's gonna work. Okay, I think this time it's gonna work. Also adjust my artboard again. Now it's way too small. It's 40 by 40 centimeters, I think, but that's just two inches. So let's assume this is your drawing and your artboard. Actually, your artboard should fit the like the scale you need. Let's just do this to test if you can hatch the houses. The houses now. Boom! It works. 
And also, um, there's another way to do hatches in Illustrator called Loud Paint. So for the Loud Paint stuff, I think I just do this. For the Loud Paint stuff, make sure what you should do is you select all the layers that you want to paint and you create a new layer here. And you copy it. Press Control Shift V to paste it in case. And then you're gonna select it, make sure it is all the stuff is selected and you're gonna change the stroke to a very, very thin runway. Okay. So for now, you can also unsync the, like, close the other layers. Okay. So this is the layer you're gonna, uh, do loud pen on it. You can just uh, select all the lines and press K. So for now, for example, I'm gonna hatch this house. I just choose a color, maybe pink. And I click it, continue. And it's gonna make a loud paint group. Uh, the reason why I'm gonna, why I duplicated the line work is uh, because if you do loud paint, you cannot go back anymore. You, you cannot change the line weight, the lens, uh, like the line tab. So, Make sure you keep your original language. Let's just randomly hide some stuff. Okay, let's assume I've done my love pen here. So what what I can do is I select this again. I cancel the color of the stroke. Can I cancel it? Okay, now I've canceled it. And then I open my other layers. So in this case, it won't affect. You're still able to adjust the color, the line weight, the line type of your original line works. And the next stuff I want to cover is, let's just use this file again. How to edit pattern in Illustrator. Let's start with first how to like add textures. So you can go to window and you can go to swatches. Okay, so you can see for now you open a tab called swatches. Here is the, on the right corner, here is the button. So you click it. Open Swatch Library. So in the Swatch Library, it provides a bunch of like swatches, like different color schemes, and also patterns here. So for the pattern, my recommendation, also my my professor's recommendation is you only use basic graphics. So you're not gonna use nature, not gonna use decorative. If you don't want like fishes, uh, like cars, peoples flying on the walls. So I'm gonna choose basic graphics and textures. And then I'm gonna choose this one. No. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one. Change my. 
So now I have a texture. What if I'm not happy with it? What if I think maybe the texture is too large? So I right click on the texture. I choose transform, scale, okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I only want to adjust texture. So I don't want to uh, select transform objects, just check transform patterns. And I choose to scale maybe 50%. Okay. So now the texture is changed. If what if I'm still not happy with it? What if I think maybe I'm gonna to adjust the line weight in this texture? So I select it, I go to object pattern. Oops, sorry. Just right again. Select this. Okay. I select it. I go to object pattern, added pattern here. Okay, and then I zoom out. Uh, you can see uh, within the square, this is how your pattern looks like, and like this part is how the like. If the pattern arrays, uh, what what will it look like? So, if I'm gonna to adjust the line weight, I just select all of them, and I adjust the stroke here. Maybe I want it really really thin, zero point zero zero one. Okay. Okay. So now, all the lines in your pattern, is thinner. Mm, the next step I, I'm gonna do is I prefer save, save a copy so it won't affect the original pattern in your Illustrator and I name it just. Okay. If you successfully did it, it will tell you the new pattern has been added to Swatches panel. So if I open Swatches panel, you're able to see the AALD pattern here. Okay, and just click down. Mm. And the last thing I'm gonna to present is about image trace. So I just open a new document. No, let's create a new document. So as you have seen in the in your further drawings, you may need to zoom in like in a maybe several houses scale and you are encouraged to add many, many oops. Let me see the chat box. Yeah, can just adjust one. Drop down top menu again. Oh, thank you, Ada. And yes, uh, this workshop is uh, it's being recorded, and I think the AALD team will upload it soon. And also. What did I say? Yeah. If you're uh, gonna put some trees in your drawings, here's a trick. Firstly, I wanna maybe open an image, not here, here. Materials, trees. You can also like edit it in Photoshop first to change the 
image into a black and white or maybe also grayscale. Okay, thank you, David. Mm, and what you're gonna do is maybe you don't want to put um like realistic tree image into a drawing you want to take uh, like in line work so what you can do is you firstly adjust the scale and you click it choose image trace here And every time, do remember to adjust the results of your traced image. So you can do, you can click advanced and here is all the options, just play around it. So I want, maybe I want more there hope. I want high pathos, I want less color, I want less noise. Okay. If you feel good with this result, you just uh, click expand it. And for now, I'm gonna use the, oh, sorry. Firstly, I want to ungroup it, ungroup. And I'm gonna use the magic one tool to select all the white part and I delete it. Okay, so for now you've got a tree with the outline and hatch. Just change the color here. Okay, and I also can change the line weight. I don't want to. Okay. Now you have a very, very detailed tree. Actually, trees. There are two. Mm, and what I can also do is, what if I don't want that much of details? So I can click the line and I right click it. I select release compound path. This is almost like a an group. And after I release compound path, you can see there's a outline of the tree and all this, like the small gaps, now you are able to delete them. Or you can also just grab the outlines. and delete all this stuff. I don't like them. I'll make a new layer for this. Cool. Mm. What if I'm gonna array all these trees? Like, if I have five trees in a line, I just, press Alt and keep holding Alt, you just move it. So it will copy the trees. Mm. And for now, I don't think uh, like the intersecting part looks good. What I can do is I go to window and I, I choose Pathfinder here. So in Pathfinder, uh, there are several modes that Illustrator will automatically like uh, calculate it for you. So I just choose the tree and I go to this one. Okay, so now all of my trees are in the uh, like all of my trees have become a single object. Mm, 
let me think what else should I show you guys? I think uh, basically that's it. And I have uh, like several last tips. If you guys are struggle with uh, like color palette, firstly, if you think you guys are really good like color or like really want to do colors, you can go to Pinterest. No, not, not my progress, just Pinterest. And you can search color palette, color palette. And you can just choose your favorite color palette and use this as a reference. It would be more efficiency and might be more good looking than you just keep trying. And also, I would say Crofts at Daniels, they love grayscale, they love line drawings, and they love black and white. So if you guys are not sure whether you can do colors, make sure to do it in grayscale. Uh, like do it, do a grayscale drawings, you will make less mistakes, and it's an easier way for you to get a higher mark. Mm, and also, okay, another thing is CAD blocks. So for example, if you are gonna do some like very detailed stuff like cars or people, you don't want to image trace or manual tra trace it. So you can go to any website or just like CAD ball or something. So uh, you can download some CAD blocks here and just put it into your Illustrator. It's uh, gonna save you some time. Uh, and also what I should say, oh yeah, website to find material. So for that part, um, here's also a website called Toronto Open Data. So for this website, um, actually it's top secret. In Toronto Open Data, you may able to download a very detailed city model. So you can use this to replace these, these like, where's that? Replace these a very simple houses uh, in your Rhino model. And so you can save many, uh, like you can save time without modeling, like actually modeling your site. Uh, and also I think, is there anything else? I think uh, that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, like individual questions about your drawings, or if you want some peer feedback from me, now it's time to ask. Thank you. Can you repeat that secret website one more time? Okay. Uh, so it's called, uh, let me find that for you. It's called Toronto Open Data. This part. Mm, it's something around here. So if you search 3D model, it sometimes won't show up, but if you search it, let me try 3D model. No, okay. I'm gonna check my email. Um, DL, no. Okay, I think I cannot find the uh, link quickly, but um, you guys can ask a librarian from MDL library, or uh, just ask them where to 
uh, download the like site model of Toronto, and uh, they will absolutely respond you with the link quickly. No worries. Um, Christina, uh, do you want to share your screen or? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm a bit behind. Um, so I'm still on one C, and I'm trying to like I'm still at the point of like making the roofs for the building. Um, I just want to share my screen. Yeah, sure. I'll stop sharing. Um, for some reason, it says the host disabled attendee screen screen share. Okay, I think I can make you a co-host. Yes. Okay. Um. One second. Okay, let's see how to do this. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, one second. Okay, so basically, I kind of fucked up. Um, wait, can you still see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. So on the tutorials, they were showing us how to do roofs and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure how to do the roof because on the tutorial, they said we need like this roof layer, mm -hmm. which I can't like I made this layer when I was making these like I tried to make each one and then I tried I don't know how I managed to do this one I, I literally forgot to even press but it worked but like for the rest I'm like individually ha like joining each one and then creating a surface and then trying to offset it but like isn't there a, a easier way than doing all of these buildings individually yes absolutely I'm gonna share my screen okay and how to do it in Rhino. Mm, just stop here. Okay. So let's just assume my let's just use my site. Oh, it's super slow. Okay. Okay. So let's assume uh, this is a single family housing. Make a new layer, maybe just one or two. Just hide this. Hide the mesh. Okay. So let's assume this is a single family housing and just firstly I'm gonna it it hold the houses in us. Okay. So for now I've got this. Then I'm gonna dupe face border. Maybe just dupe border. Okay, so for now I've got the curve here. I just rise a little bit and I'll draw a line in the center. Oops, I think this is way off. Sharply perspective. Where's my house? Here. I'm gonna draw a line in the center. This is ugly. So from there to there. Oh no, actually I I shouldn't move the face water stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Deep water. Okay, so draw a line. Select the line and make it shorter. 
scale maybe one zero point eight or something. Okay, so now I lift it a little bit. Lift it a little bit, maybe one meter. Okay, I think one meter is good. And then I just click here. It's called surface from corner point. I just do it like this. Shade. Okay, but for now you haven't down. You just need to uh, select the surface you just modeled and you join them. And the last step uh, is you scale them. Scale it. One point one. Uh, base point you just click enter so it would be in the geometric center so scale it one point one okay and now you just uh click the sphere here you just lift it a little bit maybe more, maybe more. okay so i think uh basically this is your roof is that answer your question? Um, yeah, but I was just uh, like, I was just wondering, so I have to do that for like each individual house. Like there's mm -hmm. no way that, because I think on the tutorial, he like, I don't know if they like showed it, but it was like, they were showing how like different houses are able to be made. Like the, already, like the roofs are already there. Like there was already a surface made, but I didn't know if that was like something we had to make or if that was already available on the layers roof already on the layers yeah like there was like um i don't know if anyone else like also like saw the tutorial um but like he already selected the roof layer so uh, actually in the tutorial i think the uh ta ta is like uh manually like they picked the pick the uh they pick the uh what is it top side of the uh geometric and then they uh pulled it up manually too because that's in the uh workflow video and then uh they use like what you said about generating the roof i think that's chamfer edge okay but there's like so i basically i have to do them individual like individually there's no like other way around it uh, I, I don't think you have to draw the lines themselves. Uh, there should be a layer already that, like, um, like David said, you, you have to move it, but you don't, you shouldn't have to draw it yourself, like the flat surface, I mean. Yeah, but, like, for some reason, I can't find that. So, like, is it something that could be wrong while I'm, like, like, before I make it an isometric? Uh, no, like uh, I don't, I don't have the face file myself neither. I uh, we have to do it manually. But the easier way to do that, you can use Grasshopper. So <laughs> just Grasshopper, and then the uh, what is ISO something, and then you can just select the top surface. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Or another way you can do it is just uh, select all the buildings and then explode it into faces. Select all the top faces, duplicate it to another layer, and then rejoin the previous exploded ones together. OK, yeah, I'll try that. Thank you. That sounds like an efficient way. Thank you, David. Wait, wait, wait. can you repeat that? So you select all the buildings, explode them, and then how do you make all the roofs together though? That's something I don't quite understand because I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but like sitting there for three hours trying to make each individual roof is not something that I would necessarily enjoy doing. Uh, let, let me see if I can uh, show an example on my, on my, from my side. Yeah, let me make you a co-host. Wait one sec, can you, uh, yes, here. Okay, now I think you can share your screen. I'll stop sharing.
Yeah, I'm just waiting for my Rhinum to load. Because I didn't do houses in my 1C, so I'm also very interested in how to do it. Just let me uh, load my Rhino. I'm getting prepared. Yeah, uh, if Shepherd Edge doesn't work, you can also use Loft. That's what I did, because that's much easier. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Right. Hopefully, I don't I don't mess this one up. Because <laughs> I have okay, just to show you, I have no idea which file I'm supposed to be working with. This is a really bad habit. But anyway, uh, not this one. Right. So this is this should be like the file we're given, right? These are all the three D massings. And then uh, for the area we want to do, like, like I'm just going to use like a section of it, say. And then if you click it, it's like one geometry, right? Let me just click this one. And then just uh, select all of them, explode. And then uh, select the faces you need. So that, that's like the top layers. Hold shift, just uh, select each one of them. There shouldn't be that many ones. Like the easier way to do is use uh what is it to use grasshopper, but then I don't have the grasshopper file with me and I can't remember the command. It should be list and then ISO or something. Just select these and then control C. And then on the right side you're here, you just create another layer. And then uh this should be copy the object to layer. In English, I use the Chinese version. So copy object to layer, and you have this object copied to this layer. And then uh, hide this, lock this, control A, just join them back together. And so you'll be left with, my rhino is not letting me speak. <laughs> I have a question. Yep. Um, what's the like the last layer that you hid or you locked? Like, what is that layer? Pardon? Uh, like the last layer at the end that you locked before you join. Oh, that's the layer where I, where I keep all the top faces. So like, oh. I, I'm gonna, I exploded these geometries. 
I copy the top layers to a separate layer. I copy the top faces to a separate layer and then join them back together. So I have the geometry complete and like a layer selected. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, and now if I see, I have the uh, these layers ready. And then uh, to to pull it, so you wanna uh, like the chamfer edge process. I just use the sphere to pull it. You can also just click click the sphere and then type like a uh, say I'm gonna do two meters. Oh, whoops. I use millimeters, so that's two thousand. Whoops, never mind. I have no idea what unit I'm using. It just goes funny. You have that, and then uh, you just click that and click chamfer edge. And chan chamfer edge, chamfer, right. And then click all these layers. This is the part I hate, because for complex geometries like these, like chances are it's gonna, it's gonna mess up and generate like a really weird shape. So another way to do it is just use the love command so you're gonna select all the uh, surrounding ones. I'm gonna just go back to this. Suppose that we have a top face like already. And then uh, we can just click offset. Oh, geez. Enjoy. Uh, sorry, uh, Chu, Chu Ping? Yes. Right, uh, do you remember the command to select the border? Uh, do you bother? Is that what you mean? Like, do you bother? Yeah. Right. Offset it. I'm going to do just whatever it is. And then pull it up. And you should be able to just uh, select these two and then click uh, lock. Right, I'm, I'm not doing it correctly. So like, cause the top faces are like curved. So there's these weird corners, but then if you cover this part up and lo only look at this part, you should be able to like create, say like a top surface and then link them with the bottom one. So that makes like a roof. If, if I'm making sense. <laughs> oh yeah, I got it. So for the offset part, I think uh, you can also try like sweep to curves. Oh no, I mean for the loft part, sorry. Pardon? Uh, like of, for the loft part, uh, you can also try like sweep to curves. Sweep to, okay, uh, I'll, do, I'll try it. It just said, okay, uh, the only thing you need to worry about is for loft, you're gonna make sure that these small corners don't get like, you know, how do you say, uh, don't get pushed. Uh, like, like uh, I'm, I'm using love, it's just like, I'm using offset, it's just one. I, I, it's really small distance. Cause if I use like a really big distance, say offset, I'm gonna change the distance to three. Then you're gonna see, geez. Then you're gonna see uh, here that this uh, small rectangle here like actually disappears. And this is gonna mess up your curve, uh, mess up your roof. So just uh, offset a really small amount and then just pull the thing up. And then again, select the bottom one and the top one just, uh, and then loft it. Just make sure that this point like, you know, uh, is from corner to corner. So the top corner to the bottom corner. So like everything doesn't mess up. And there you are, you should be able to get a go. Yep, that. For some reason, the top one isn't covered. So I'm just gonna cap it. Oops, sorry, there. Uh, normally speaking, you wouldn't have like weird shapes like this. So like uh, it's gonna look more like a roof for like these smaller ones. It's gonna look triangular. Yeah, I think that's that. I have a question. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so basically, but this like this shape is already extruded. Um, so would this come on top of like the three D matting that we already have? Yeah. So this this would be the roof. Yeah, th that would be the roof. Maybe not a great one, but like it works. <laughs> That's what I did for most of my. Let me just see. Oh yeah. Right. Maybe I maybe I extruded too high. You probably shouldn't do that, but. Okay. Yeah. It's something like that. For some, I, I don't know why, like all these. Right. It's something like that. But normally you wouldn't have like uh, this weird shape. It will be more like, you know, kind of inward, like the, the one so I'm having. Let me, let me see what I did. Where did I put mine? Hmm. There. Right. Normally, normally speaking, you would have like something like this, so it's more like a triangle. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Where am I? Okay. Right. And then uh, another thing that uh, okay, I'm, I'm not sure about this one because I'm not great with Grasshopper. But what you can do is just use Grasshopper and then do the, and then uh, do all the, select the top layers of all these stuff. Uh, just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to search online how to do that. I find it on website. Or you can find it yourself if that's quicker.
Did you find it? Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for my rhino to load. All right, found the website. Nice. It's this one that I that I use in my project, and it worked out all right. Nice. Oh, I see. This looks like a very interesting method. Yeah, so basically what it, what it did is that it deconstructed the geometry as B-wraps, like it B-wraps as faces, and then uh, select, the, and then you sort list to sort like the top layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but just uh, just make sure that uh, the, the models we have, which is the, uh, Masi on Topo, I think that's not B wrapped. So you might want to either explode it or uh, just extrude the roof, roof volume. That sounds interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else want to ask some questions? Okay, if not, I'll just put down my email address in the chat box. So you guys can ask me questions after that. And what else? Mm. Thank you again. Uh, thank you again for coming here. Will the recording be uploaded? Yes, it will. Thank you.